Hello everyone. After the release of the new amazing series from HBO, I thought it'd be awesome to tackle a shot including a dragon in After Effects. In this video, we partnered up with Video Copilot, Helium X, Film Convert, Plugin Everything and the Pixel Lab for an awesome giveaway. But we're going to more details about the giveaway later in this video. For now, this is a shot we're going to be recreating from scratch. I have uploaded the project file to our website at vgfxpro.com where you can download it for free. You just have to edit your card, check out and then you will receive a link to your download page. You can use this as a starting point for your project or just to further explore the project settings. Ok, let's get into the tutorial. Ok, so let's start with setting up the project to ACES. This is optional, you don't have to use this ACES workflow but in this video I'll show you how to integrate it into Element 3D. Create a new comp, mine is just gonna be 1080p at 24 frames per second. I'm gonna call this Dragon, Element 3D and Helium. This is the live action plate we're going to be using. It's from Paxos and is completely free. However, you can donate to the creator. Okay, let's change the project settings. Click here to find it in the color tab, change the depth to 32 bits, the working space to ACCG. And check on linearize working space, then press OK. Then import a clip, then right click on it, interpret footage, main, is 24 frames per second, which is perfect for us. Go to color management and check preserve RGB, then edit to the comp. Add an effect called open color IO. If you're familiar with this plugin, you should already have a configuration setup, but if you're not, I'll add some links in the description that can help you understand the ACES workflow in AE. So I'll select the configuration to be ACES 103, change the input space to be utility sRGB texture, this will make sure that your clip looks the same as we're using it as a backplate and we're also not exactly sure what color space or gamut this was recorded in and probably already have been graded too. So anyways, change the output space to be ACCG. Make sure to go to view and turn off use display color management. Then let's create a new adjustment layer and copy the OCIO effect from the live action plate to this adjustment layer. Change the input space to be ACCG and the output space to be Rec 709. This is just for preview purposes. Then duplicate this adjustment layer and change the output space to be C log 2 or whichever log works better for you. This could depend on what camera you use, whether it's a Sony camera or Arri camera. Let's turn off the C log 2 adjustment layer for now and just use the Rec 709 one. Then let's move on to the Dragon 3D model. I found this amazing 3D model on CG Trader and it's about 45 bucks. But there's usually a sale going on there. I got this 3D model for about $37. The reason I chose this model is because it comes pre-animated which saves a lot of time. Firstly, we need to convert this to OBJ and because it's an animation we need to export an OBJ sequence. We're going to do this in Blender. The animation file comes in FBX but also in Blender project files which again is super helpful. So just double click on the blender file you want to open, in this case it's the dragon flying file. This is a low quality version of the model but that should be completely fine for us as we're going to be creating more of a wide shot. Then go to file, export, obj and check animation. Now back in after effects, press ctrl and y to create a new solid. Then if you press ctrl and spacebar you'll get the effects console by video copilot as well. If you don't have this I highly recommend it. Search for element and apply it to the solid layer. Then click scene setup to open element. Then go to file import 3D sequence. Find the OBG sequence you exported and double click on the first frame. Press OK for the import options. Let's firstly import the textures. Because we are using the ACCG workflow we're going to need to convert them to be in the same color space. Again if you're not following this tutorial with the ACES workflow that's completely fine you can just skip this part. There is a timecode shown on the screen when to skip to. There is an amazing website called acescolorspace.com and there is a page called convert images. For the base color and the roughness map choose the utility sRGB texture option as the input color space and the output space to be ACCG and the output file format to be .exr. For the normal map, choose the utility raw option as the input space and ACCG as the output space option. For this one, choose PNG as the output file format. So once you have converted the maps, let's start with importing the diffuse map, which in this case is the base color map. For the glossiness, we'll import the roughness map and for the normal map, we'll use the normal map. For the normal map, I've also increased the amount from 100% to 175%. Now click on the mesh 
check normalize size. The last thing we're going to do in Element is change the HDRI map. You can download this map from Polyheaven for free. I'll have a link in the description for the one I used. Make sure you download the HDR version and not the EXR version. In Port of Bad Boy, I'm going to leave the settings here at its default. Then click OK and leave Element. Now, we're going to animate the dragon to actually move in 3D space as right now it only flies in the same spot. For that, let's go to Group 1, Group Utilities, Create Group Null and Create. This will create a null which you can use to transform your 3D element. Let's rename it to Dragon Control. I've also changed the color of the layers to dark green to kind of group them. It will be easier to find them later on. Let's skip ahead to 6 seconds and free frame in the clip and freeze frame it here. And let's hide this layer for now. We'll come back to this layer in a bit. Now let's create a camera. Go to Layer, New Camera. I want to make sure that the camera's focal length I choose is something that could realistically actually film a dragon flying by in the clouds. What I imagine is that someone's on top of a mountain or somewhere high using a zoom lens. So I will change the focal length to be 500. Make sure your camera's type is set to two node camera and press OK. So at first I was trying out different angles and what looks best. And this is the camera angle I ended up using. So now I know that I want to film the dragon from the side. So let's reset the camera and just push it back far. We rotate the dragon rather than the camera. Okay, so this is the camera setup. Let's go back to the dragon to animate that first and then we'll move on to animating the camera. Go to the top view. I've moved the dragon back further. Here's my top view for reference. We did not select it, press P and then hold down shift and press R. This will bring up the position and orientation. Click on the stopwatch for both of them in the beginning of the timeline. Then let's go all the way to the end. Move the dragon to fly a bit further into the distance. Then select both of the keyframes by clicking on one of them and holding down shift and selecting the other. Right click on one of them, click on keyframe interpolation and change the spatial interpolation to continuous bezier. This means that you'll be able to curve the path of the dragon so it doesn't just go straight but rather flies at an angle. Then go back to the active camera view and change the orientation accordingly so whichever direction your dragon is flying, just have them tilt that way. So before continuing in the video, let's talk about the giveaway. To enter, all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and comment on this video. You can comment whatever you like. There will be three winners in this giveaway. The first winner will get a license for Element 3D by Video Copilot, Helio Max, Film Convert Nitrate Bundle, which means you can use it on any of their supported platforms, your chosen cloud pack from the Pixel Lab, Deep Glow from Plugin Everything and our Master VFX Bundle which includes all of our VFX packs. The second winner will get Action Essentials 2 from Video Copilot, again Helium X, Film Convert Nitro Bundle, your chosen cloud pack from the Pixel Lab, Deep Glow from Plugin Everything and our Master VFX Bundle. And the third winner will get Optical Flares by Video Copilot, Helium X, Film Convert Nitro Bundle, your chosen cloud pack from the Pixel Lab, Deep Glow by plugging everything and our Master VFX bundle. We will announce the winners 24 hours after the release of this video, so make sure you leave a comment. Alright, back to the tutorial. Now let's animate the camera to follow the dragon. I only used the point of interest to animate because I did not add too much depth to the scene, but if you do end up animating the position too, make sure you add more depth with the clouds to the scene. This is for later though. For now, click on the stopwatch in the beginning of the timeline, then go to the end. Make sure to keep the dragon in and just add various keyframes. Try to make sure the spaces between the keyframes and the camera move between them is fairly similar to make the camera pan as smooth as possible. We're also going to press down Alt and left click on the point of interest of the camera. Let's add a simple wiggle expression. Type wiggle in bracket 0.6,60 and bracket. Now back to the live action plate. I just want the top part of this footage to be shown as it quite perfectly matches the perspective I want. Unhide it and firstly let's make this layer 3D. I'm gonna move it back far then you may need to rotate it and scale it up. Once the live action plate is in the right position, let's set up our lighting to match the background. Go to layer new light and change the light type to parallel. For now leave the intensity as it is but make sure cast shadow is checked on. Leave that at its default too. I move the light around and change the position 
just for reference, as moving the position of the prior light won't actually change anything, only if you change the point of interest. So I moved it to the side and lowered it down slightly. Then go to the top view and make sure the light is coming from behind. This will give you more of an edge light. Selecting the light, press T and change the intensity to 500%. Then go to the back plate, double press A and turn off accept lights. Then go to layer new light and let's add another light but make this one a point light. Leave everything at its default again but make sure cast shadow is checked on. Again go to the top view and move it closer to the dragon by having it coming from the left still. Then duplicating this point light and move it to the other side of the dragon to increase the amount of light coming from the front of the dragon. We'll come back to the light settings but for now let's move on to the render settings in element. Before we go into the render settings let's go back to group 1 particle look and change the particle size to 20. And then in render settings physical environment change the exposure to 0.05 so it's almost not visible but it does still add very slightly. I've also rotated the environment slightly so the light source will be coming from the correct place. In lighting, make sure use comp lights is checked on. Then go to shadows, enable it and change the mode to ray traced. The shadows however do not match the lighting of the environment. So let's go back to the point lights. Press A twice really fast for the lighting settings to come up. On the first one, change the shadow darkness to 30% and the diffusion to 100 pixels. On the second point light, change the shadow darkness to 80% and the diffusion to 100 pixels as well. This matches the soft shadows we should be getting from the environment. Back in the render settings for under ray trace settings, change the samples to 3. Ok, moving down the list, let's enable ambient occlusion. I wish we could use ray trace for this too but sadly it almost never works without artifacts. For this model it has a weird noise effect and I just could not find a way to fix it. Let me know in the comments if you do know though. So let's change it to SSAO and change the intensity to 3, increase the samples to 32, increase the multi sampling to 4, decrease the radius to 0.8, change the distribution to 1. Then in the blur settings below it, change the intensity to 10, the mask mode sampling to 4 and that's it. This should not give you any artifacts for this particular model but if you do find that you have some, just try playing around with these settings until it's gone. Now let's move on to the Fox settings. If you are using the ASUS workflow I am showing in this tutorial, we have to actually turn off the adjustment layer that converts it to Rec 709 and pick a color of the background this way. This is the color I went with. Then change the fog range to be much further as our 3D object is quite far in Z space. This is again just to your liking but these are the numbers I ended up with. Ok, so firstly I forgot to mention to increase the intensity of the point lights to 500% and the fall of distance to 1000. Also for some strange reason the glossiness of the model was imported at 250%. This is why there are such a crazy highlights on the dragon. Let's decrease the glossiness amount to 100%. And we're back on track. Apologies for the errors. This is what we have so far. And now we are completely finished with Element 3D and we can move on to adding the clouds with Helium X. Ok so for Helium X I'll show you how to set up one cloud layer and then I'll show you where and how I place the rest of the clouds otherwise it'd be very repetitive. So let's create a new solid, let's rename it to cloud number 1 and place it beneath the element layer. Then search for helium and select add helium effects. Then double click on volume and select smoke. Then click on import. There are countless of amazing cloud VDB elements from the pixel lab and they are absolutely beautiful for providing these elements for the tutorial. Sadly at the recording of this tutorial you will have to find the cloud you want to import, create a new folder, place a specific cloud element into it and import it from there. Otherwise helium will import the clouds as a VDB sequence which we don't want for this. On the import window I don't see an option to uncheck importing it as a sequence but I'm sure this will be fixed in the later versions. Once you import it, it will place a null and a VDB layer on the top. We'll drag that down to be above the cloud1 layer so the null allows you to move, rotate and scale your cloud element. Let's move the cloud into the view and change its size slash density to much higher. In this case I increased it to 10800. Let's switch to the top view and I'll move it behind the dragon and place it in the left corner for now. I also want to change the density of the cloud. The lower it is, the more see through it is basically and the higher the puffier. I will increase this to 300. I changed the color of the clouds to be a pale yellowish color to match the background more closely. Now from the top view as you can see I placed the clouds all over the scene with different densities sizes. This will depend completely on the shot you're working on. 
I added quite a few clouds to be in the foreground and I made the density very low but the size quite big for those clouds. This helps massively with faking the depth so it doesn't look too 2D. If you want to move your camera in 3D space rather than just panning, you would need to add much more clouds and even further in the distance to make sure the perspective changes rather than everything moving relatively close to the camera. Using a live action plate is quite a quick way of getting around that. Let's also quickly fix the edges of the live action plate. Let's apply a motion tile effect and increase the output width. Let's also add the curves effect and tweak the color so it matches the 3D element more closely. We're not going to use the motion blur in here, rather we're going to create a new comp. Let's rename it to final comp. Let's go back to our dragon comp and disable the ACCG to Rec 709 adjustment layer and turn on ACCG to c lock 2. Then bring this layer into the final comp. We're going to apply the pixel motion blur onto the dragon comp. I've increased the shutter angle to 240 but you're welcome to leave it at 180 degrees which is what would be used on cameras in real life. I also increased the shutter samples to 16. Let's create a new adjustment layer and I just named this temporary look. Let's add film convert to this adjustment layer. In the camera settings I chose the Canon C300 Mark II and c Lock 2. Then I decreased the exposure to minus 0 0.09 change the temperature to minus 30 and increase the tint to 3. The film stock I chose was KDP400 PTRA, then decrease the film grain strength to 15. Within the color correction settings I've changed the shadows to be more green and actually boosted it, then for the midtones I decrease the brightness. Then also decrease the saturation to 65. Then further decreasing the brightness with the curve effect which created more of a hazy look. But I am no colorist so this is just my quick attempt at very roughly matching the wipe of the House of the Dragon look. Okay so that's the end of the video, I hope you learned something useful and new. Make sure to check out all of the amazing companies that participate in this giveaway. There will be links in the description. And don't forget to leave a comment for a chance to win. Don't forget to also check out VGFX Pro for some awesome stock footage for your next project. Thank you, bye.